Happening now in less than one week's time, another incident of stranger danger at a local school. Plus, a 14-year-old girl is facing assault charges after allegedly kicking a sheriff's deputy. And the sun is out for today, and it's going to continue throughout the next couple of days. I've got the details next. The news at noon starts right now. Live and on demand, this is WNY News Now. And thanks for joining us for WNY News Now, TGIF to you and yours. I'm Justin Gould. Police in Jamestown are once again warning the community about a suspicious incident where two men approached students walking to school. Jamestown police say the men approached, then followed students who were walking to Lincoln Elementary School along Front Street yesterday. The men, police say, also tried to engage in conversation with the students. When the kids got out, got to the school, they immediately notified the principal there. This is the second incident in the last week where students were approached by men in the Jamestown area. Police say last Friday, two men in a white van approached students at Ring Elementary School on Jamestown's north side. And for anyone with information on either of these incidences or know the identity of the men, are asked to contact police at 483-7537. The number again is 483-7537. The Jamestown Public School Administration and Police Department are encouraging parents to, to continue to talk to their kids about the importance of not talking to strangers or if any stranger approaches them to report it to a trusted adult immediately. Well, a 14-year-old Cattaraugus County girl is charged with assault after allegedly kicking a sheriff's deputy during an incident last week. The Cattaraugus County Sheriff's Office says deputies were attempting to assist the teen in getting mental health treatment during a welfare check in the town of Limestone on Tuesday morning. Deputies say the girl became combative and then kicked a deputy and their patrol vehicle multiple times. The teen, deputies say, was taken to Olean General Hospital under the state's mental health law for evaluation. The girl is charged with second-degree assault and resisting arrest. Deputies say she was issued an appearance ticket and the case has been turned over to the probation department for, for further court proceedings. Well, as vote counts continue in many key states that will eventually determine the U.S. presidential election, President Donald Trump counters remarks by former Vice President Joe Biden with public comments of his own now. Karen Kaifa is in Washington with the very latest on the numbers and reaction from the two candidates. In his first appearance since the early hours of Wednesday morning, President Donald Trump came to the White House briefing room Thursday evening to once again claim without evidence that the election is being stolen from him. It's going to end up perhaps at the highest court in the land. We'll see. But we think there'll be a lot of litigation because we can't have an election stolen by, by, like this. The president's remarks came as the ongoing showed margins tightening in states crucial to his re-election bid and his campaign made legal moves. Judges in Georgia and Michigan Thursday rejected lawsuits from Republicans and the Trump campaign alleging ballot counting problems. Former Vice President Joe Biden delivered his own remarks earlier Thursday urging Americans to have patience with the ongoing process. We have no doubt that when the count is finished, Senator Harris and I will be declared the winners. So I ask everyone to stay calm, all the people to stay calm. The process is working. The count is being completed and uh, we'll know very soon. Meanwhile, Georgia, Nevada, Arizona and Pennsylvania continued their vote counts inching toward a finish that will determine who occupies the White House come January. Hundreds of thousands of ballots have been counted so far today um, and we're in very good shape, um, but there's still still some to count. In Washington, I'm Karen Kafa. Karen, thank you. Biden has taken the lead in Pennsylvania by just over 5,500 votes. New numbers released by the Associated Press show Biden with a lead of 5,594 votes over President Donald Trump. The AP says the presidential race remains too early to call. Neither candidate has reached the 270 electoral college votes needed to win the White House. Biden has taken the advantage with 264 electoral college votes over Trump's 214. 
Well, New York State's winter regic exams have been canceled due to COVID-19 concerns. The New York State Education Department announced yesterday. Officials say they determined the January exams could not be safely and fairly administered across the state because of pandemic concerns. Now, because of this cancellation, all students who were scheduled to take that test in January are exempt from the requirement of passing the exam to earn their diploma. The state's Board of Regents will meet in December to finalize the changes to diploma requirements. Additionally, the cancellation will not affect students who are on track to earn a Regents diploma or Regents with advanced diploma designation. If a student earns an average of 90 or above on all the exams they took, they're still eligible for that advanced diploma status. No decisions have been made yet regarding June and August exams for next year. Well, we thank you for joining us here for WNY News Now. We hope everybody is uh, having a great Friday as we head into a weekend. Good to see uh, Jody, Jessica, uh, Terry, Melissa, uh, Lori, and Cindy. Uh, thank you all for joining us. Hopefully you are doing well. Uh, Melissa says it happened uh, the, uh, from our top story. It happened to her daughter and her friend in Lakewood on Wednesday by the same creep, except he was uh, followed them uh, with uh, certainly uh, not an appropriate uh, reaction in his hand. Hopefully police can find who is responsible for this and, and talk to them because I'm sure they have many, many, many questions. Well, one question we don't have, I think, is the weather forecast. It's absolutely beautiful outside right now. I have my window open behind me, Dakota. And uh -huh. I'm just enjoying it as much as I can. Um, how are you doing, sir? I see you're at home now. Yes, this is my home office, my humble abode, the Hunter Palatial Estate. And uh, <laughs> so uh, you finally get to see my uh, home office, kind of the inner workings of kind of the home office. But yeah, it is a fantastic day out there. A live look coming from the Warren City Bank shows you that you can still see some of the fall colors on the trees on the allegheny mountain 62 over 44 the air is relatively dry so that means when it's dry yeah no rain the satellite radar composite basically just shows you that we have a few high clouds that are starting to move in and that's going to continue throughout the afternoon today so expect a few high clouds especially later this afternoon 63 here in town right now 62 in Mayville, 64 for Donia, 65 by the lake in Dunkirk, 68 already in Erie, Randolph checking in at 64, and 61 right now in Olean. We managed 66 as our high yesterday. We should be right around that once again today, if not a little bit better. 49 is where we started the day. 79 is the record high for today, and 12 back in 1951 was the record low for today. So for the afternoon, you command C, command V. Mac users will know that. That's the copy-paste command. Uh, for the uh, Mac. Uh, a few high clouds this afternoon. It remains breezy and warm. 63 on the hills, 70 across the lower elevations with a southwest wind 10 to 20 miles per hour. If you like warmer temperatures and, and the sun shot, the sun shine, we've got more of it to go through. Potentially record breakers. We'll talk about it in detail in a few. Justin, back to you. All righty, Dakota. Thank you very much. Well, as Americans wait to see who will win the White House, the U.S. economy is still struggling because of this pandemic. This as the U.S. is dealing with massive unemployment and no guarantee a stimulus package will come anytime soon. John Lawrence explains more. The U.S. economy is showing some signs of recovering from a rough second quarter. The housing sector has fully recovered from the downturn, supported in part by low mortgage interest rates. Business investment has also picked up. But Jerome Powell, the head of the Federal Reserve, says COVID-19 is still crushing the economy. Overall economic activity remains well below its level before the pandemic, and the path ahead remains highly uncertain. Roughly 751,000 Americans claimed first-time jobless benefits last week, according to the Labor Department. Every state's got the same problem. Every state has massive unemployment claims that it's paid many more, much more than they expected. Powell says a stimulus package would benefit the country, especially those who have lost their jobs due to COVID-19. I think we'll have a stronger recovery if we can just get at least some more fiscal support when it's appropriate, you know, when it's appropriate and the size Congress thinks it's appropriate. 
Um, I do think that that will likely. But Americans are going to have to wait. Stimulus talks between House Speaker Nancy Pelosi and Treasury Secretary Steven Mnuchin are at a stalemate. But Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell says a stimulus bill might be considered before 2021. I'm John Lawrence reporting. John, thank you. According to exit polls, the economy and the COVID-19 pandemic were some of the top issues for voters this year. Well, the latest numbers are out and jobs were added for the sixth month in a row. The U.S. economy added 638,000 jobs last month. Now, for October, unemployment dropped to 6.9 percent. That's according to the monthly jobs report from the Bureau of Labor Statistics. Now, while there's progress, the economy is still down 10 million jobs since the start of the pandemic. Well, coming up next, we'll tell you about the latest COVID-19 fatality in our area. And later, we meet another furry friend that will be featured in our Pet of the Week segment. Stay with us as WNY News Now continues. You're watching WNY News Now, where coverage comes first. EagleZip.com is your local one-stop shop for all of your home and business computer needs. Located on Fluvan Avenue Extension, just outside of Jamestown, EagleZip.com sells and services all brands of desktops and laptops, as well as servers and network equipment for your business. All new computer sales include transferring your data from your old computer plus a two-year warranty. Call EagleZip.com today. Stop by EagleZip.com today and let us make computers easy for you. I'm a survivor. I'm a survivor. I'm a survivor. Testicular cancer is the leading form of cancer in men aged 15 to 35. One in 250 men will be diagnosed with testicular cancer. But 98% will survive if detected early. As a survivor, I believe early detection is the key. Learn how to do a testicular self-exam and other important facts about testicular cancer at oneball4tc.com. Want weather now? Download the WNY News Now mobile app and stay up to date on severe weather alerts. Plus, anytime hazardous weather strikes, stick with the Southern Tier's only 24-7 streaming network that keeps you safe. You're all in a tornado warning, so now is the time to go to a safe place, small room, lowest floor, near the center, away from windows. What are you waiting for? Download the WNY News Now mobile app today. It's free in the Apple App Store and Google Play Store. With coverage that matters, this is WNY News Now. And welcome back to WNY News Now. The United States has once again set a new daily coronavirus case record. Yesterday, the nation reported more than 121,000 cases. That's according to data by John Hopkins University. Now, this is a major jump from the previous record set the day before. On Wednesday, more than 102,000 cases were reported here in the United States. Now, in New York State, nearly 3,000 people tested positive for COVID-19 yesterday, the most we've seen in one day since May. Well, a 100-year-old woman living in Cattaraugus County has died due to COVID-19 complications. The health department there reported the death yesterday, the 19th since the outbreak started. Officials also announced nine new cases, including seven women and two men. Of the new cases is a health care worker and five people reporting direct contact with another person who tested positive for COVID. Currently, 111 cases are active with 518 total. As of the update, 296 residents are either in mandatory or precautionary quarantine. Now, 22 new cases of COVID-19 were reported in Chautauqua County yesterday. There are now 153 active cases with 21 people hospitalized. That number down from four in Wednesday's update. Well, the holiday season is typically one of the biggest travel times of the year, but with the pandemic, flying may look a little different. Mandy Gaither has more on what we can expect in today's Consumer Watch. 
It's an industry still reeling from the pandemic. It has been devastating. But this holiday season, airlines are hoping more travelers take to the skies. U.S. airlines since the onset of this pandemic have absolutely prioritized the safety and health of all passengers and their crew members. They're leaning into science to make decisions. The industry group Airlines for America hoping to ease travelers' minds to safety. In addition to rigorous cleaning of aircraft, the organization says during check-in, passengers can expect to be asked simple health questions like, have you been exposed to COVID-19? And they recommend you get to the airport early. You may think not as many people are traveling. I can get to the airport at the last minute. And I would caution you the other way. Go ahead and allow extra time. And plan ahead, especially when it comes to food. Not all vendors are open at all of the airports. So you may want to grab a snack and an empty water bottle, and then you can fill up the water bottle on the other side of TSA. For today's Consumer Watch, I'm Mandy Gaither. Mandy, thank you. Under new rules released by New York State last week, all travelers to the state or residents returning to the state will have to test negative for COVID-19, then quarantine for three days and test negative again. Well, today is Nacho Average Friday. It's National Nachos Day. Time to celebrate the famed Mexican dish, whether it's with beef, chicken, salsa, or beans. Now, the most important ingredients are, of course, chips and cheese. The dish was actually created on accident. Back in 1943, the wives of several U.S. service members went to a border town restaurant looking for some food. Well, the establishment was closed, so the manager whipped up a special dish he had with ingredients on hand. It included fried tortillas, cheese, and jalapenos. But nachos didn't become popular in the States until the 70s when a sportscaster mentioned the dish during a Monday night football game. So go grab some chips, cheese, and friends today and enjoy a plate of nachos. I certainly would love some nachos right now. If anybody wants to bring them my way, please do. Uh, great to see David. Good to see Mary, uh, Amanda, Heather, and Joe as well. Happy Friday to all of you. Well, now, now let's get a check of our full first defense weather forecast. Chief forecaster Dakota Hunter is uh, coming from his uh, bedroom in Dakota. It looks like you're on the phone. Are you ordering nachos by chance? Hi, yes. Uh, can I get an order of nachos, please? Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't realize you were live. Uh, <laughs> well, you I see, I it. have two phones here because you see, this is not my normal phone. This is my old 6S because on my 11, I've got the show playing. So anyway, the only, mm. so yeah, only tech people have multiple phones. Um, multiple phones. Anyway. Well, Dakota's got nothing no, no else to do besides the weather. So you're just going to play with all your technology all day, I guess. Yeah, that's right. right. I've got an iPad here. I've got phones. <laughs> I've got about 35 different computers. I've got an Xbox sitting right here. I've got everything I need for quarantine. You're good to go. So yeah. we're good. We're good. Yeah, all I need now is some cheesecake, and we'll be good. Uh, <laughs> yeah, if you want to drop it off at the Hunter Palatial Estate, please do. Yes. Send yes. me some, too, a, please. I mean, I, can't, yes. I still can't taste anything, Dakota. That that's yeah, well, still. I hope that subsides soon. But if that's the yeah, worst well, symptom I have, I'm thankful. Yeah, and it's like you know, if anybody <laughs> ever wants to find you know you know find the Hunter Palatial Estate, it's the house that's got the Golden Gate uh, around it, and and the Butler. <laughs> uh, <laughs> let's go and take a look at the wind gusts from yesterday. It was windy out there yesterday. The peak wind gusts we had 26 at, at uh, the Dunkirk Airport. 20. Uh, here in Jamestown, and it's still going to be a little bit breezy, especially through the day today. So keep that in mind. Here's what's coming up here. More sun, more work. We know you're going to like this. The weekend, A++, 100%. However you want to rate it, it's going to be fantastic. We will be likely tying or breaking record highs dangerously close to that as we get into Sunday all the way through Tuesday. We do bring in a chance for a few rain showers on Wednesday. 63 as the noon hour at the Jamestown Airport. Healthy southwest wind to 13. You can see the uh, camera that's on top of the double tree uh, bouncing a little bit in the dew point at 45 degrees. So the air is relatively dry 
And when it's dry, that means no rain. Speaking of the records here, these are the records going from tomorrow through Tuesday. Now, tomorrow, don't think we'll break the record. That's 75, uh, set in 1938. Uh, the record for Sunday is 69, also set in 1938, where it was 73. Monday, we could tie it, 71, which was set in 2009. And Tuesday, we're forecasting 70, and our record high is 72, set in 1999. So we're getting dangerously close to pushing those records. Will we tie or break them? We'll see what happens as we go through the next couple of days. Satellite and radar shows you ah, nothing. That big blue H spinning around on your screen, that is high pressure, and that is going to stay with us basically over the next several days and across the continental 48. Shh. It's relatively quiet. We just have a little bit of rain and snow up there in uh, the uh, northwest. Other than that, it is quiet. Future Scan basically paints you that same picture with basically a few clouds coming in later this afternoon. These are high-level clouds, about twenty to 30,000 feet uh, off the ground. So, again, these are mainly not going to produce any precipitation. They clear out tonight. Tomorrow is going to be another fantastic day. Lots of sunshine, maybe just a few high clouds. That's it. Otherwise, just bake in the sunshine. It is going to be great and warmer. Bill's forecast still can't go to the game, but they're going to be back at home, and they're going to be taking on the Seahawks. Still no change in the forecast. Upper 60s, lots of sunshine. I'm not a Bill's fan, but go Bill's, I guess. Uh, zone forecast, the inland areas today. Yeah, just keep on staring at the sun, Post Malone. We know you like it. Next seven days of your life coming up right now. Uh, brought to you by 42 degrees and sunny. 67 tomorrow. 69 on Sunday. The sunshine will continue all the way basically through Wednesday. We're going to chance for a few scattered showers on Wednesday. Then we're back to the sunshine and warmth as we go into Thursday. Temperatures going down a little bit into the upper 50s. We will take a break and be right back. Your WNY News Now, your source for breaking news. First Defense Weather is sponsored by 42 Degrees and Sunny, smoking deals on smoking accessories. Learn more at 42DegreesAndSunny.com. That's 42DegreesAndSunny.com. Extra, extra, read all about it. Not tomorrow, but right now on the WNY News Now mobile app. Follow local news as it happens. The mother of a special education student at Maple Grove High School is speaking out. And stay informed with the Southern Tier's only 24-7 streaming network. And Lake Erie is covered in less than 1% of ice as this winter season has entered its peak. Download the WNY News Now app right now. It's free on the Apple App Store and Google Play Store. Speaking up for what's right. Helping out when things go wrong. Raising our voices alone or together. Not just breaking news, but breaking barriers. Fighting for victory on the battlefield and on the playing field. Seeing the world through new eyes and the earth from miles above. Redefining beauty brains, and what it really means to be queen. Making ourselves heard on stage and on screen. Showing the way in Silicon Valley and showing up for others wherever help is needed most. Not just making our mark, but making a difference. Now that's a job for a Girl Scout. Girl Scouts, preparing girls for a lifetime of leadership. You're watching WNY News Now, where coverage comes first. Welcome back to WNY News Now. In an effort to help animals find their forever home, we're partnering with the Chautauqua County Humane Society in a segment called Our Pet of the Week. Joining us live is Brian Papalea, the Director of Community Relations for the Chautauqua County Humane Society. Brian, happy Friday to you. Thanks for joining us. Happy Friday, Justin. And it is a beautiful day out here. I am going to switch the view. Oh, and there goes Kane. We got Amanda Sublet from our staff, and she's going to talk about Kane, who just went over for a drink of water. So why don't you tell us about Kane as we walk over? Well, Kane is about five years old. He is a hound mix. He's got a lot of energy. 
although you wouldn't know it today, he's being quite calm. <laughs> <laughs> there he goes. <laughs> he's very sweet, very gentle, but he does not like cats at all. He does have that prey drive in him. He's a very strong boy. He's got some good manners, but he does need a little help to keep working on him. Come here, Kane. Turn around. Come here, Kane. <laughs> Can you see that face? Come here, Kane. <laughs> yeah, there we go. Good boy. He will bark. <laughs> he likes to talk and he'll let you know it. He can get pretty loud sometimes. Uh, so I wouldn't recommend him in an apartment building. Might annoy your neighbors just a little bit there. Um, but lots of exercise and he'll be happy. Wow, he's certainly a great looking dog. Um, and uh, it looks like he's he's ready to go back and watch you guys to, <laughs> ready to go back in. But uh, what else? Uh, what else can you tell us uh, about Kane? Is has he expected to get any bigger than he is at this point? He is a full grown boy. Um, he might get a little chunky if you let him. Dogs do tend to gain a little bit more weight in the home, um, but he's that energy level is going to keep him running it off constantly. He likes to run. He likes to go for walks. He'll even pull you along the way too. He almost dragged me into the lake the other day. <laughs> <laughs> well, certainly then definitely a, a, probably an active household. Um, do you think he would mix well with younger kids or should the family kind of have an older age group in there? Five and under, probably not. Uh, and that's purely because of his size. He's very big, he's very strong. We don't want anybody to get hurt. But if they're right there on that line of five, six years old, I think he could do really well. Um, but each family is kind of a case-by-case -case basis because we want to make sure everyone matches each other well to make sure we have a good fit for both the dog going into a family and a family picking a dog that they want. Yeah, certainly. And again, if anyone wants to learn more about Kane or other residents of the shelter, you can simply contact the Chautauqua County Humane Society at 716-665-2209 or even easier if you visit chqhumane.org you can check out all the residents of the society and even fill out an uh, application online to get that adoption process started uh, brian uh, and kane and uh, samantha thank you both so much for uh, joining us today i, I really appreciate it and and uh, he's he's such a such an intuitive little uh, and guy. I mean, look at him just hanging out and enjoying the the day. It's it's amazing. Yeah, it's, he's a lot of fun. He yeah, likes certainly. playgrounds too, but... Brian. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. While while I have you guys here, I wanted to ask about the Walk for Paws um, event that that took place. Uh, last Saturday. Did you guys get a good turnout to that? Yeah, the Walk for Paws was really nice. Um, we we're very grateful for the Chautauqua Mall for hosting it and for, you know, Happy Hounds, you mean Happy Hounds Hotel and Day Spa for being a presenting sponsor. We had about 50 dogs show up for the parade. Um, and something that we added uh, new this year, last year for the first time, we had an adoption that stemmed from the walk. So this year we had an actual adoption event tied to the walk and we saw seven pets go home, two of which were longer term residents of the shelter. So it was really exciting to see how that be accomplished through the walk. Wow, that's absolutely amazing. You, you, you all do such great work there. Thank you so much for joining us today. We appreciate it. We'll look forward to seeing you uh, next Friday with another furry friend. Thank you, Justin. All right, thank you guys. Well, let's uh, check back in with Dakota one final time for a final look at our weather. Well, as I told you, we are going to be pushing those records come the weekend. Take a look at this. Now, the uh, record highs are on the left. Our forecast, the uh, record highs are on the right. Our forecast highs are on the left. And you can see here as we go Saturday, Monday, and Tuesday, dangerously close to those record highs. So get out and enjoy the sunshine and the warmth, Justin. Yeah, certainly we will, Dakota. Uh, today looks to be an absolute, absolute beautiful day out there. So... Thanks so much for uh, giving that in, and I will uh, see you Monday, Mr. Hunter. So uh, Indeed, show, this show I'll wasn't too bad. It, it worked no. pretty well. Yeah, and I mean, you know, I mean, you know, it's I mean, you know, it's one of these amazing things of how technology 
uh, kind of evolved because we can sit here in our home yeah. offices and do the show. And, you know, it's just amazing how how we can do this. So. Yeah, it absolutely is. So I'll, I'll look forward to it. Thank you to Jeremy, to Val, to Amy, to uh, Joanna. Good to see Vicky and Gabriel as well. That's it for us. We are back Monday. Hope to see all of you then. In the meantime, the news continues 24-7 at wynewsnow.com and on our mobile app. Have a great weekend.